Hi guys! Today I'm going to show you how to paint a pink rose with watercolors. I started by sketching the general shape of the rose with a pencil. I find it much easier to paint when I have some kind of a sketch to go from. Just keep in mind that when you are painting with watercolors, you have to sketch very lightly, otherwise your pencil marks might show on the finished product. For the pink color, I used Carmine Red. It's a very cool tone and I think it goes quite nicely with a pink rose. My first layer is very light with a lot of water and very little pigment. If there's something I don't like in the first layer, I can just go over it again and make corrections since it's so light. After I had finished my first layer, I started to create some shadows. Meaning that I used a bit more pigment in parts that I knew were going to be darker in the end. When you're painting with watercolors, you have to be very patient and slowly build up more layers so the colors get stronger every time. When I start a new layer, I always use a bit more pigment and less water each time. Once I had the rose almost finished, I moved on to the leaves. I also wanted to add some rose parts to make the painting look a bit more interesting. I started with a very yellowish green and as I do more layers, I'm starting to use a more darker green color. I personally like to use the wet on dry technique when I'm painting with watercolors. It means that you have to wait and let each layer dry completely before you add more colors. It is a very slow process, but I always find it so interesting to see how the picture comes together one layer at a time. Here you can actually see me adding a darker shade of green on those leaves. At this point, I have to decide where the light hits and what leaves are left in the shade. With watercolors, you have to work your way from the lightest part to the darkest part. It's actually very difficult to add highlights afterwards on top of a darker color. My last layer of green is very dark. I used very little water on my brush, just enough to make it slide smoothly over the paper. And finally, I added some veins on those leaves with a very small brush. I think it's those small details that make the painting really come alive. I actually did have a reference picture that I took from my own garden, but at this point I don't really use it anymore. I just let the painting itself guide me. I find that reference photos are really useful for me at the beginning stages of the painting, but in the end, as the painting starts to come together, it's so much easier for me to just study the painting and see where it wants to go. And now we come to my favorite part of this painting, the shading. I think this is the step that really makes the painting look finished. For the rose, I just used a little bit of black mixed with carmine red. And for the shadows on the leaves, I mixed green and black. And again, I had to do several layers, each time with a bit darker color.
And finally, we are ready to remove the masking tape and see how this painting looks when it's finished. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and if you do, please leave me a like and subscribe for more.